All right, guys, look at this freeway of wires. Not exactly what you want on a classic old school bobber build. Look at this mess. But today, this is all about to change. All right, guys, we're finally back with another bobber build episode. Sorry it took so long to get back to you. There was some things holding things up. And the main thing was getting a whole new wiring harness built. And then there was a little issue with that. So let's recap what's going on with the electrical. We're completely scrapping the original harness. We're cutting way back on the electronics on this bike. Main things are like the blinkers, all the hand control electronics are gone, removing all that bulky wiring. So overall, the electronics on this bike are gonna be super basic, super clean. I also wanna show you guys some of the new components going into the bike. We got a new starter solenoid by Revival Cycles. This is the stock unit here. Um, it's just kind of old and tired and I wanted something easier to mount, something more modern. So we have this unit here. Um, I went ahead and ordered a new key switch from Amigo. And um, just because I wanted two keys, I wanted something fresh and new. And I, the old component here wasn't looking too good. And we're putting in a Bike Master lithium ion battery, which weighs virtually nothing. So yeah, let's get the old harness off, which is, it's ready to just come off right now. Put on the new harness, I'll show you that real quick, and then we'll start uh, wiring it up. So the stock harness is basically all ready to come off. Just basically gotta unplug a couple little things and then just pretty much pull it out of the way. I mean, this wiring just going to the front headlight alone is daunting. Garbage. All right, here's the new harness made by Spark Moto. Look at the difference. Yeah, I know this looks a little crazy right now, but once I get it down here and get it wired up, this will get all cleaned up. But I mean, that's the whole thing right there. I'll just slide this through here. It goes up to the headlight. That's the only wire that goes to the headlight now, where that whole last cluster went up to the headlight. And then this is going to go to the coil, and then we'll work out the rest of this as we go. One thing I did on this harness was I did a pre-layout and I marked everything so it'll go faster, but you can see here it says headlight. It's only got two connectors that go into the headlight. Got your green wire and your white wire. Boom. Okay, so here's the wires for the coils. Uh, two coils, one on the left, one on the right. This coil here goes to cylinder number one and this cable goes to cylinder number four. So the wire for cylinder number one is blue. So we got the blue wire here, connected there. And the wire for cylinder number four is the black and white wire. Okay, and over here we have the right side coil. Uh, we have one wire, one spark plug wire going to number three, one spark plug wire going to number two. Spark plug number three gets the black and white wire, which means spark plug number two gets the yellow wire. Now we have this wire here. It's a long wire that actually comes out of the left side of the motor engine case. And we're gonna run this up. And this is gonna plug into the rectifier. Then this stuff's usually easy to figure out because you just match the matching connectors. So as you can see here, the rectifier has two connectors. Here's another connector on the new harness. You know what, I'm gonna run on, yeah, down here. So we just. Now this here is another wire that comes from the right side of the engine. Got the connector marked here, engine right side. So it's just gonna plug into there. All right, so here's the wiring for the tail light. And you can see here, they wired it um, with a green, with a yellow stripe. A solid green and a black. The green with the yellow is for the brake, the black is the running light, and the green is the ground. Well, those colors don't match up with my tail light here, so I'm thinking, because we have red, yellow, and black, I'm thinking the black is the ground, so I'm gonna go with that. And then once I get the power up on the bike, I'll try the other two wires and see which one's which. Now what I'm gonna do here when I get this bike to the next stage of completion is I'm gonna pop a hole in the fender right here run the uh, wiring underneath the fender in this rib down here and then it'll pop up pop out yeah probably right here 
drill a hole right here and have it come out so you don't see the wiring so much. Well, this camera mysteriously dropped a bunch of footage, so let's brief over the things that it missed. This right here is the rear brake tail light switch. So the harness simply came with this cable that came down. It has two wires on it that connect right there. So that was a real simple process, nice and clean. And then coming out the right side of the engine right here is this cable coming up and it comes basically right here and plugged into the new wire harness. One of the biggest things I did that it missed was I popped two holes in the top of the oil tank, which is no longer an oil tank, it's now for electronics. So I just used a hole cutter, one of these right here, and popped a couple holes in these, dropped in some rubber grommets. On this side of the oil tank, I mounted the two starter switches, and those simply have a set of wires that come up to these two connectors here. So that's nice and clean and out of the way, no longer visible. All right, the first thing I'm gonna wire here is the key switch, which is this plug here. What I've done is I've already cut the wires going to the wire harness, they're right here, because they just weren't long enough. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add about six inches to these wires. So the first thing I'm gonna do is these, and keep in mind too, these wires are 14 gauge, where most of these other wires are uh, 16 gauge. You can see they're a little bit fatter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna splice these to some uh, 14 gauge wire. To do that, I'm gonna use these connectors here. You guys may have seen these online. They're those connectors that have the solder built in. And you just slide the two wires together and the solder's in the middle and that melts the wires together. And then these shrink down and seal it off so it's watertight. So I'm gonna do that to these two wires now. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna strip the wires back maybe a quarter of an inch. Actually, what you want to do, slide this on one side here all the way. Actually, it's good to have the wires kind of opened up a little bit, kind of fray them out like that, both ends here, kind of open them up. And then what you want to do is you want to put the uh, two ends together here, like that, and then uh, slide the sleeve over. Like that. Then we want to hit it with some heat. My first time ever using that product and it looks pretty good. Still hot so I'm gonna let that cool down. So yeah, once these connectors cool down, it's um that's a good that's a good weld. Alright, so the starter button here has you can see it already has some really long wires, so I don't have to worry about it. So let's plug in the ignition here. It uh, goes like this. Then we'll feed all the wires through the grommet we just installed. And we'll just insert the cap on this side here. I'm going to use a bolt terminal to connect this wire here into the starter solenoid. So we just take this in here, slide on the wire. You can see I already stripped the wire back. Slide it on there and crimp it. So that's the uh, female, and then we come over here to the other wire, the mating wire, slide on the male connector. Crimp it. So now when I got to take this bike apart, pull off the oil tank and everything, we've got this connector here. We can just uh, disconnect it and we're good to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and solder the wires for the push button starter here. As you can see here, these wires are very small gauge. And when I want to take this thing off, the starter button is so small that I can actually feed it through the grommet hole right up here. So these wires can be permanent. So we've got this little teeny soldering device here. Just slide it on like that. And just so you know, there's two wires for the push button. I can use any wire going to the black and the yellow, it doesn't matter. So let's take this one here to the black. And 
And of course you want to make sure the two wires are coming together inside there. And then let's just hit this with some heat. Beautiful. So I'll just do that for both wires. It's tiny. It's ridiculous. Alright, everything's looking good. The last thing to hook up is the battery. The battery positive will go to the starter solenoid. There's another cable that goes from the motor to the starter solenoid. And then the uh, negative cable that goes from the battery to the bike. So let's hook that up now. Alright, first thing I'm going to install is the uh, ground wire for the battery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the ground to this floor motor mount bolt. Now come up to the battery and uh, attach to the negative terminal. So let's just slide this on here. Like that. Okay. Actually, before I install the uh, negative battery cable, I think I'm going to install the um, the positive here coming off the starter solenoid comes off the solenoid right here, comes around, goes to the positive terminal right here. Okay, now here's the negative cable that we just mounted on the other side of the motor mount there. Attach that to the negative cable here on the battery and turn the key and hope for the best. All right guys, here it is, the moment of truth. I'm a little bit worried, but I'm gonna turn the key and hopefully things light up. You guys ready? Nothing. No lights, nowhere. Oh, I was worried about this. All right, so this isn't really how I wanted to finish this video. Uh, obviously the plan was to get the bike to start, but when you're doing a build this extensive with all the new wiring, the odds of you running into some little problem is pretty high. The good news is Spark Moto has great customer service and I'm already talking to Matthew over there about how to troubleshoot the system. But I just gotta get this video out. I'm behind on videos and um, we had some delays. So I don't wanna hold this video up any longer. So the next video is gonna show you guys how I'm gonna troubleshoot the system. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me in this video. If you wanna win the bike, go to the Patreon below. I'm also giving away a Speed Strength helmet and along with one of these Cardo Free Comp Plus uh, helmet communication systems. See you guys next video.